Enciso. Oh, it's fabulous! A strike to get you up off your feet! Hello, welcome to Seagull Social Season. What are we, Ben? Um, four. Season four, episode something else. Five, I don't think we've. I've not got something. a title on my. Um, um, oh, is it five? It might be five. I think For so, some yeah. reason, it's not on here. But do you know what? It doesn't really matter because it could be season, episode, anything. As far as I'm concerned, Brighton have beaten Manchester United for the fourth time <laughs> in a row in the Premier League. Wipe the floor with them, may I add, by the way, for the Too sixth easy. or seventh time. <laughs> but before we get into all of the good stuff, Ben. You're looking very, very tired, my friend. How are you? <laughs> I'm so done. I'm so done. I got up at six yesterday and got home at four thirty in the morning. <laughs> it, it, it's been a wild, <laughs> wild time, but it was yeah. I think up there with the best away day ever. We were trying to figure it out oh, yeah. like what in terms of away days. I think people were saying Arsenal away last season. You may say what Arsenal away day because we spanked them twice at the Emirates last season. But I think the Premier League one was obviously up there. But yeah, for me. Maybe it's recency bias, but yeah, that Manchester United away day was just incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, I went out and afterwards when I got back to Brighton and celebrated until the early hours. But no regrets, mate. Otherwise, how are you? No regrets, apart from the fact I've probably got a bit of a one-man band on this podcast. I yeah, would be surprised if it turns it. the first ever solo episode by the end of it. But um, <laughs> no, we'd like, to, we'd like to think we can make it to the end. But um, yeah, yeah I'm very good, mate. I'm very, very happy, I've got to be honest. I've got so many Southern Manchester United fans that I really just don't like. And for this for this reason alone, it just makes it so much sweeter because they've never been into Old Trafford before in their life and it just makes it funnier. So when you when it comes back around, mate, they all live around the corner. And they've been to a game <laughs> in their life. And finally... We support our local team. Finally, we, we can say... We've beaten you four times in a row. It's, it's fantastic, isn't it, really? Because the way we played... Considering, by the way, the, the team that Deserby put out, and I think this is the biggest talking mm. point of probably the whole thing. Obviously, United started quite well. I think uh, Match of the Day sort of analysed it quite well in how they just started with a diamond sort of thing. Um, shout out Isaac um, United Cloud said the same he said that you know he was quite confident with how they set up originally um, but knowing De Zerbi, he just sort of I don't know how he does it but he flicks the gear he knows how to get how to get through whatever they try to play right I'm not going to try and get into it because it'd be a very long podcast episode but the way that De Zerbi be able to change up the change up the team and um, break through that so, oh, it was just such a lovely goal as well because the way we played <laughs> leading up to oh, I've got so much buzzing in me right now I can't even present properly but I know, yeah, I'm not doing was, this I'm not doing the episode justice because I'm I have no energy nice. for one of the biggest game, like, <laughs> results in our club's history and I'm here just absolutely no, fried we started we started a bit worryingly the, the team was a bit I'm not I wouldn't say worried but I, I'd say I'd, I was probably looking at it Ben like <laughs> the gross the Lana pivot doesn't always end well yeah. it's, you know especially with you know a big beast like Casemiro in the midfield you think god they're just going to get absolutely bullied but it was the complete opposite yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw Adam Lallana take out Casemiro at one point which is nuts yeah. I'm surprised Lallana didn't snap in half when he just looked at him um, sorry, Lalana snapping in half, <laughs> not not Casemiro. But yeah, I mean, I think you, I think worried probably is the right word when we saw the lineup. I think a lot of people were mm. people were maybe not as surprised because of Purvis was missing yeah. because I think there was talk of him being tired after or traveling back from Ecuador. Yeah, um, tired bonnet, tired bonnet. Oh my god, it's lightning! Jesus, um, if you hear, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was really distracting. Um, <laughs> And then, yeah, obviously, Lalana starting was maybe a bit of a shock. No Solly March. Apparently, he didn't train in the week. So that was, I'd, but I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, there's the thunder. Uh, brilliant. <laughs> God, this is going to be so distracted now. Um, but yeah, no, it was worrying. I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, and then, obviously, Lamptey are left back. And you think, well, he's done mm. a job there before. Um, but obviously, Man United's more a different beast. Maybe not at the moment. Um, but yeah, I mean... The doubts were soon. Well, no, to fair that first twenty minutes, I was like, "Oh, this isn't this isn't looking good." And the lineup, we were worried about that. And then, yeah, the first twenty minutes, we, they battered us really. Um, mm. Derby said that they they start Man United played how they didn't expect them to, which is quite rare. Normally, we're pretty well organised and know what we're know yeah. know, know what we're going to be up against. But yeah, yeah, I mean, fair play to Man United; they're really really good. Rashford looked really really good. Uh, Jason still made that big big save um, with his legs. And I mm. think it kind of just turned after that, didn't it? I think that's when the uh, the tides changed. Or yeah, um, but yeah. yeah, that first twenty was pretty ropey. 
Yeah, not to mention, I mean, obviously the changes we did make, obviously the, the players we were missing in this Tupinian, in Solly March as well, they're very, very big players for us. I mean, it can't be doubted as to how much the, the Stupinians helped us this season. Solly March the same last season too. Um, so I, for, for those reasons alone, Simona Dingra obviously coming in, we know he's very good, a very good talent. Did we know he was going to be as good defensively perhaps as what I picked up on? I think he won a lot of tackles, won a few headers as well. Um, put in a really good shift, sort of getting up and down uh, on that right side, helping out Beltman at times as well. Um, obviously, the way we play is so sort of dynamic, isn't it? So the amount of times you've got to have one of your attackers dropping back and e- vice versa. Um, I thought, yeah, Dingra really, really surprised me for the better, I'd say. Um, absolutely run his socks off, I think, by the time the end of the game came around. It was about time we got subbed off, Ben. Yeah, yeah, he was he was knackered. Um, but yeah, he was really, really good. Um I think during preseason, he, when it was against was it Newcastle Brentford when he scored, obviously he looked really, really good down the left, which is where he played a lot at USG, and I'm sure that's probably his normal position as well. Yeah. So when and then when I can't remember what game he played, but he played on the right and he didn't really look as good on the right. But yeah, against United, yeah. he was very, very good. Um, I think it was Regulon's first game for Man United. You know what? I didn't even realise Regulon was played until the second half. I thought he came come on at half time, but yeah, apparently he started. I, the game, but... I forgot they had him actually until yeah, yeah I think so was when he made a move. Yeah, and then I thought, oh my god, hang on, man, they got Reggie on, haven't they? Mm. So but yeah, Dingra, they... Dingra was skinning everyone for pace, and he was so yeah, he was mm. he was very very good, and obviously the assist, especially I think with his weaker foot as well, Lalana's dummy through the legs. Um, yeah, we we really turned it on, and then that the whole game changed for that uh, after that goal. Mm. But yeah, fair play to through Dingra because he, he was very very good in the build up to the goal. But, um, yeah, I loved watching him play, and I was quite surprised he started. Yeah. Obviously, considering the talent that we have on the bench, like João Pedro not starting, I think maybe that would have been an opportunity for him to maybe play on the right or start on the right. But Zerbi got it right once again, didn't they? Yeah, and it comes across. Who's it going to fall to? I mean, if it's going to be anyone against Manchester United that you want it to fall to, Danny Welbeck's the boy. Away. I mean, if it's not Danny Welbeck, it's Pascal Gross who also got on the score sheet. It's worth noted, but Danny Welbeck, I think he's got one of the best records of a returning. United player. Uh, he's now got five goals against them, six goals against them since returning back to Old Trafford. So it's uh, it's amazing, really, for us because obviously he turned into such a meme, didn't he, when he was at Watford? He turned into a bit of a meme at Arsenal. Um, I felt a bit bad for him, really. I thought like, yesterday, I thought he really, really put a good shift in. Always seems to turn up in big games like this. Um, especially, I don't know about you, but like when he's not expected to do something, but he sort of just comes in as a bit of a surprise act rather than being the person that starts and leads the line. I feel like when he's not got as much pressure on him because we had Jao Pedro, we had Ansu Fati, we had Evan Ferguson on the bench. It was a bit like, well, Danny, you know, your your chances now, if you don't deliver, we've got other players. Yeah. He always seems to deliver in them sort of moments to me. Because against Newcastle, I was almost, I wasn't glad he was injured, but I was glad that he was unavailable because then it gave Evan Ferguson the opportunity and I was crying for Evan Ferguson just to play because at mm-hmm. West Ham, Welbeck and Evan Ferguson didn't work well. Um, so then when I saw Welbeck starting against Man United, I can't lie, I was a bit like, oh, can we not just play Evan Ferguson because we know what he's about. But yeah, I mean, I quickly ate my words because yeah, Welbeck had an unbelievable game. And you know what, it's probably, that's probably the right decision. I mean, obviously it was because he scored, but starting a player like Welbeck against Man United at Old Trafford, I think it's a lot better having experience up top, someone that can hold up the ball well, rather than maybe Evan Ferguson. Um, so I probably, yeah. I will say I'm not going to say I'm not going to say probably right decision because yeah the Serbia obviously got it right um, but yeah. yeah no I absolutely love Welly and also unbelievable bloke as well just absolutely so sound I think one of my mates that worked used to work at the training ground um, just said like how how nice he is just like a really really sound guy treats everyone really really nicely and um, you can kind of tell that in his interviews can't you that how much of like a yeah. sound bloke he is. It always helps the players just nice. I mean, there's so many arrogant footballers these days, a lot of egos around, particularly in the Premier League. Especially uh, at Man been... United. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it, you just think it doesn't actually take that much just to be quite nice, does it? I think that's the good thing about Danny Welbeck and stuff like that. You've, you've got players who just care about the game, care about their team. Um, you know, they don't just care about themselves. I think probably Welbeck had that when he first broke out into the United team. It probably was an individual now in that sort of maturity era that he's in, it's it's so much different. And um, while we're on the subject of maturity era, I just want to mention this man just once because deserves it. Lewis Dunk, um, alongside JP, by the way. <laughs> but I think I counted at least seven chests that he did, maybe eight or nine. Um, 
It's it's obscene. I mean, the one that he did back to Jason Steele, when we were a bit under it a little bit, we, we had mm. them coming at us quite a bit, and it was just a bit of a chest back to Steele. I mean, I saw, you saw Ramsdale's comment, I, I assume, where he said, yeah. I got the famous chest back. Um, <laughs> and I think, yeah, when, when that happened, I was just a bit like, ah, okay, why am I worried? Because he's not. <laughs> mm. So uh, after that, I just thought, we're going to be all right now. I, you know, I was, I was going into that with a lot of confidence, but... When you see Lewis Dunk doing his little chest back, you think, "Okay, we're okay." Because if he's if he's like this, then we're fine. I mean, when you he, see Dunk sort of diving for England in, as well, he's not. for England, yeah. so good. I don't think we've spoken about it for England. Um, no, we haven't because we recorded the Man United podcast uh, preview before, or no, the day of the Scotland game. And yeah, he was phenomenal, wasn't he? And like he was really, really good for England. But yeah, he done the chest back to Ramsdale. I think that chest back is becoming like more, well, almost as iconic as Pascal Gross's gross turn. I think we, yeah. just, we, get, we need to start allaying every time that Lewis Dunk just chests it back. Yeah. Because yeah, it's just yeah, become yeah. so iconic. He's so good at it. It's nuts. Like, that can go so wrong. But the ball can, yeah. the fact he can just get it to rebound so well if his chest into the arms of Jason Steele or any keeper is, is ridiculous. Because it's genuinely. If, if I try doing it, I'd probably just most... hit my chest and just drop to the floor and the striker yeah. just picks it up and scores. That's probably, <laughs> but obviously, I'm not. Lewis I can't Dunk, even emphasize least. enough to someone that's never tried to. Say you're a football fan, but you've never played football. You know. You can't emphasise enough as to how hard that is to do. Like you really, it's it's really it sounds ridiculous, but it's got to be one of the most measured sort of skill moves that you've got to be able to pull off. Like forget all of the sort of you know, Rabonas and all that sort of fun stuff, rainbow flicks and everything. Don't get me wrong, absolutely love that side of the game, but then to control a chest back to a keeper perfectly weighted, pretty much ten out of ten times, I'd say is probably one of the most underrated um, forms of a skill move you can get. Because I just don't, I, you don't. One, you don't really see it happen very often, and two, it's just it's exceptionally hard to even try and do. And if you yeah. if you don't Especially believe for me, a defender, go down the park that's not right meant to now. be that skillful. Yeah, go down the park right now. Get someone to ping a ball across to you, and then just chest it. And I guarantee you, it's going to be a lot harder than you think it is. <laughs> Imagine I someone you. actually tries that. Maybe yeah, not right now because it's thunder and lightning. <laughs> yeah, if you do film it, it and send it to us, if you can do the dunk chest yeah, back, that would be quite that. a good one. We'll get um, one from anyway. Jack Albion probably. <laughs> <laughs> do some parking port play, just yeah. <laughs> try to chest yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see that. Jack, I'll really see you doing that. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, Lewis Dunk, absolutely fantastic yesterday. Colossal as always. Um, one more little thing he did, we sort of chest it back and then he lobs it over. I think it was Bruno Fernandez who was behind him. Back to steal. Oh, so, joke. Yeah, a- yeah. Absolute joke. Like, stupidly good. Anyway, um, that's why I was so happy with the first half because a lot of people were saying, how about you? Because of the first 20 minutes, they were like, you know, you know, May United probably coming back into this. We, but I, I don't know. I just felt really, really confident when we sort of held that out. Obviously, we had the controversial moment where Hoyland didn't score. Um, it, it's not a debate, is it? It was, it was out, right? Yeah, it was out. It, yeah, 100%. And we, luckily, so... so I, I, I was right at the back at um I was right at the back of the away end and we had like the police officers behind us, um, obviously just watching over, but they had TVs behind them as well. So as soon as it yeah. happened, like when literally still was Hoyland was scoring, he was behind me he just goes, It's not a goal, it's not a goal, the ball's over line. I was like, What? He was like, Yeah, and I was like, No way and then obviously it took like five minutes for him to re- mm. uh, re- like make the decision or whatever. But yeah, he was behind us going, No, it's no goal. He was like pointing at the T V that he was watching. And then we saw it before it was even announced. So we started celebrating in the crowd. And everyone was like, why are you celebrating? It's like, he's just said it's, it's just said it's uh, over the line. So that was that mm-hmm. was a relief because you think if maybe if they get that goal, then maybe the game changes a little bit. But I think that definitely just like deflated Man United even more and gave us more confidence to then go on. And obviously the second half was just unbelievable. But um, I mean, yeah, Rashford done quite well, obviously, without <laughs> the ball went out of play. But he done well up to that point. Um, and it was just a quite annoying goal to uh, concede like that. Like, Brasmus just like mm. toe poking it in the bottom corner like that. It was a bit, a bit of a shit goal to concede. Yeah, and that's um, sort of. I, I won't just jump, but when obviously Hannibal scored that goal, um, don't get wrong, it's a good finish. But I thought when he scored that, and then Hoyland scored that, those are the only two real ways I could see them scoring. Anyway, I, d- I never really felt like we were yeah, okay. They had quite a few crosses into the box. Rashford had a few chances. In fact, we made some but... very, very good blocks. Well, yeah, Bellman, we did. Dahoud made a really good one. I think Dunk made a really good one. I think they were all in the yeah. first half as well, like the really solid yeah. blocks. Yeah, still made a couple of good saves as well, first half. But never really did I think that they were actually going to score. I don't know if that sounds really silly, but I just, I thought when when they when Hannibal scored, like, oh, I just thought, 
we'll be all right though because that's that's what it's taken them to score and they've not done anything before then to even give me a reason to think that they're going to score again yeah so i thought well okay they might have a bit of possession now and they did but then that sort of just fizzled out again and we had it again uh, if anything we could have gone up the other end obviously anzu and a couple of others we could have had four or five oh, mate if anzu um, fatty scored ryan oh, and oh my god that well. would have topped that would have topped off that that away that would have made the away day the best away day ryan away day ever yeah. if if fatty had scored that like that would have been the chair Fatty's thought, coming on coming on Fatty's, <laughs> Fatty's coming going on. on that was so funny we were just like <laughs> we were going oh waiting for him yeah. to come on um i can't yeah, even remember what song day. we were singing what was it uh, he scores. Was he scored? Was Hansu Fatty's magic? Where's yeah. magic? Oh yeah, where's ma- yeah? Where's his magic cat? He scores yeah. it with left foot. Um, I think yeah, I think we, that we song's existed for absolutely years now. So it's like, <laughs> I, I think we had it for David Stockdale at one point as well. So mm. it's just like mental. But yeah, um, oh James Wilson, James Wilson's who we had it for. That's a random memory. Did we? Yeah. yeah, James Wilson. What memory? For Man United as well. Funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, so point of the matter is, Lewis Dunk was fantastic. We made a couple of good blocks, as you say. Jason Steele deserves the credit. Got into the game really, really well. I thought his passing was superb, as pretty much always. Um, as we said, that sort of double number one thing worked mm. so well. I really, I'm a big fan of it, I've got to be honest. Because, I again, you wouldn't have gone around anyone saying Verbruggen's been dropped. And you wouldn't have gone around to anyone saying still shouldn't start because of Verbruggen. It was just, yeah. he's right for this one. And I think yeah. that... He's got the fans' trust in his decisions now, Deserby, with you know a number one, which is mad to, to mad to say. But the fact we can rotate as regularly as you could in midfield in your goalkeeping spot, it's it's mad. So very very happy with with Steele's performance, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, okay, move on to second half. Um, I thought, yeah, as I say, I thought we played very very well from here on in. I thought this is where we really asserted our dominance. I thought uh, particularly Lalana. Uh, I thought yeah, when the Lana's on it, he, he's a joy to watch in him. Yeah, he, he he just runs very it. good. I haven't seen him play that well since well Leicester away before he got injured. I don't think that was mm. when he was like very very good. Um, uh, yeah, it's just so good to see it. so good to see him play like that. It's mad just mm. to think like, how old he is as well. <laughs> Same with like yeah. Welbeck. They're both getting on a bit, but they're still like dominating a match at the Old Trafford with some yeah. obviously some big boys on the pitch for Man United. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love Lana. Yeah, he's he's so class. He's just very so classy class. player. So, yes, very classy player. And he brings out the best in all the other players around him. I think the creativity he has just, and he just knows where everyone is constantly. The little flicks he does, the little turns he does. Mm. Yeah, it's just, you can tell he's been playing at such a high level for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, crazy he's, to he's, suggest he's very, very it, good. but I think if he just had the injuries on his side, he really, really, really could have been such a top player. Like really, really top player. Imagine him playing in that Liverpool team back when they had Firmino and Mane and Salah on their form, on their prime, prime form with Coutinho. If Lallana would just stay fit, he could have been so, so big in that um, Champions yeah. League win inside. It's, it's a shame, really, when you look at it. It's good for us because it means we get we get hold of him. <laughs> but for his career's sake, we, you know, he, he could have he really, really could have been up there. I don't think I ever truly appreciated how good he is until he came here. Yeah, no, same. See, yeah, definitely. He's he's superb to watch. Like you could really, really see the class. I think it's it. because it's he was boys. surrounded by unbelievable players at Liverpool. So you kind of just mm. he just kind of blended in there. But when you obviously put mm. him in a Brighton team, especially under Potter, when we were playing in that blue kit during lockdown, you kind of you yeah. can see the difference. You can see the levels there immediately. The where the yeah. where he's come from. Um, but yeah, he's been brilliant. And yeah, like I said, he brings out the best in other players. And I think he just makes that. Uh, he's obviously an unbelievable leader. It seems like a really, really good coach as well. Obviously, um, what was he coaching the under-21s as well during the international break, yeah. uh, which is so good, so good to see for us as well. Hopefully, mm-hmm. when he does retire, he'll end up, he'll still continue to coach with us. I'd lo- yeah. love him to stay at the club. Yeah, no, I agree. And to move it on to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that as a link, that lockdown thing, because Lamptey, two assists yesterday. Oh, yes. Lamptey. And we've been banging on about lockdown Lamptey since I can remember. Um, we, we are seeing it now, and I can't say we're starting to. We are because he was he was so good yesterday, particularly that second half. He really, really came into the game. He was playing left back as well, and as mm. we as we mentioned sort of earlier, of course. But I mean, the assists he got very, very, very reassuring because that's the Lamptey that we saw all the way back when, and it's really, really nice to see him getting his name on the score sheet, isn't it? Yeah. Or assist sheet, but yeah, he was uh, he was so good. Um, so, yeah, showing his pace again, taking on players. Um, it re- it works really well for him being like almost like an inverted full back or wing back. Yeah, just it worked really well against against them. Um, 
and yeah, he was class. He, I think he looked absolutely shattered at one point. I remember, I think it was like the 60th minute, he, <laughs> the ball went out of play and he just had his hands on his knees, like bent over. I was like, mate, this, this kid's giving it his all. Um, and yeah, our wishes have come true, Ryan, because yeah, like you said, we've been praying for Lockdown Lamptey to come back and we are seeing him again. And it's yeah. in a season when we need him the most because we were looking pretty poor for cover at left back, but mm. now we do have cover there. You can consider Lamptey as a good option at left back now. Mm. which is a massive, massive plus because it looks like that Barco guy's going to City who we wanted, the ginger yeah. lap and Boca, um, which would have been a good signing for us to pick up in January or whatever. But, um, yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to miss out on him, but that means Lamptey can step up. And if he can stay fit, please, Lamptey, for Christ's sake, stay fit. We've got an absolute player on our hands and even just an mm. unbelievable weapon to bring off the bench as well, like against yeah. Newcastle when he played almost like a right winger when he came on. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's so good to have him back and getting to assist. He... I think obviously Pascal Gross won man of the match, I think. Um, but I would, yeah, for personally. He won just clubs for, man of the match, didn't he? On, oh, on was Twitter. it? Yeah. Okay. He won fans. Player, but for me, I, I probably would have, I would have given it to Lamptey just for the, mm. like, the sentimental for him, but like, yeah, him back and rewarding him, re- rewarding him so, for that. He's so lovable, isn't he? You, I think if you were to ask everyone in that crowd, I think pretty much all of them are going to say they love Tarek. He's such a likable character, but. Also, we all know how good he is. I think that's what's that's what's the thing that gives us the most faith because he sort of carried that team, didn't he? Really, in the in the lockdown era, um, the amount of chances he created, he was getting so many cross across the box, and none of them seemed to work because obviously Mope and Trossard's finished yeah. lockdown. Because it was, was falling to Neil awful. Mope. <laughs> um, yeah, a, a Tross bar as well, wasn't it? So oh, we, we had bar. we had some horrible finishing back then. Um, but yeah, good to see Trossard doing well anyway with uh, him now with asking for more game time. God, it's, it's, it seems like a curse when these players leave us, honestly. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're, <laughs> that, is them. that is funny. Yeah. That is funny. Exactly the same situation, already. It? But we already knew that was going to happen mm. before he went. Um, anyway, don't need to talk about Trossard. He's <laughs> gone. Uh, but yeah, Lamptey is... assisted Pascal Gross. That was yeah. the beautiful. And the way yeah. Pascal Gross sent Martinez flying, it was... So funny, so funny. When I was watching the, the replay, butcher. the butcher got absolutely <laughs> ruined by Pascal Gross. Man, it's ridiculous, and yeah, it's a very, very good finish, finish from Gross. But it's just the fact you can say it's ruined, and ruined it him. doesn't even do it justice as to how much he got <laughs> destroyed. Like he, he got sent so far back. It was so funny to watch. Like the guy went back to Argentina literally just to celebrate the World Cup win in 2022. <laughs> like he was gone. And the the way that oh, gross every single time we play Manchester United, they must hate him. They must mm. really, really, really hate him. I said this on that United View podcast thing that we went on. Uh, shout out United View, by the way. They're actually quite good guys. And then, you know, whatever. But I was very, very confident going on there. And I was like, all the comments, if you read the comments, they're like, Brian fans need to be humble. Brian fans need to be Class, humble. Yeah, always. And, always and like I was that. just like, mate, I said, I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm not trying to be cocky. I said the only arrogant thing I could probably say that I can say confidently is that if you try and attack us, I fancy us to win because we're really good at dealing yeah. with that. Um, and that's probably the most arrogant thing I could say. Um, oh yeah, I was, don't get me wrong. I was so confident going into this game, which is yeah. dangerous. Cause normally, it normally back, it normally backfires when I go confident into a game because if, when we're playing well, everything's go, everything was going right for us. Everything was going wrong for Man United, and you thought, oh, maybe this is the time when they'll get a win or whatever. But yeah, yeah, it, we just continued to just impress and. We, we, we have we have every right to be confident at the moment. Um, yeah. And also, I did say 3-1. That was my prediction. Um, yeah, same here. Unfortunately, same don't here. win any money for that. But um, yeah, that was, that was good. Nice one. Um, but yeah, it was... Gosh. Yeah, we, we have every right to be confident right now. And even going into, what, Athens, we should we should obviously win that as well. And we have every right to be confident. So that one, ta- one day it's going to bite us in the arse for being confident. But right now we've mm. got to embrace it and enjoy it whilst we can yeah exactly like we're, we're, we're so used to not being like that we're used to being not confident at all going into most games we'll be thinking oh god you know we're going to throw we're either going to throw this away or we're going to be lucky to keep the score down that's what it used to be all the time you know if we if we score we're going to throw it away and if we go away from home to a game we're probably going to lose by two two nil or more <laughs> it was it, yeah. that was it and and then that was it and we, we would just hope that we our home form would keep us up and maybe we'd beat the odd big six team because we'd be up for mm. it and we'd celebrate a throw in every single time. <laughs> but that was that was it. And I don't get it wrong. We <laughs> could make well back. But it's true. And we could make yeah. well end back there. And I'd still be happy with that because I'm Brighton fan. And at the end of the day, that's where we come from. And, you know, if even we got relegated back down, we'd still, it'd still mean something. But 
why would we not want to enjoy this moment and be as cocky and arrogant, if you like, as possible? Because it's it's obscene. We're in unforeseen territory that we never thought we'd be in. To be mm. going to Old Trafford without even really an ounce of doubt in my mind that we're going to win. I knew we were going to win. And I was there. I was like, we are going to win this game. I said on the podcast last week, we will finish above Manchester United. You and Jack looked at me like I was some crazy guy who said <laughs> ridiculous. And I just thought, that nah, I just don't think they're very good. And I just think we are very, very good. And, I, and I'd be very surprised if we don't finish above them. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to stick point. to that for the rest of the season, um, and we'll see what happens. Maybe they, yeah. you know, get a bit of form, and they they probably will. But you'd expect. I still think we're good. At one point, surely. Yeah, but I want to touch on Gross a bit more because we didn't do him justice, really. Because um, what a legend! I, I think it's worth not mo- not just no- noting the fact he's a legend because it's become just the usual thing yeah, saying De Kaiser on everyone's Instagram comments and everyone <laughs> gets like a bunch of likes on Twitter, and that's how everyone does it now, rather than giving him the actual credit he deserves. Which is basically playing a bit of a De Bruyne role for us this season. He he sort of drops in half spaces now, and and I see I see the vision of what we're doing. It's really really good, and I think that um, as I said, that Isaac who I mentioned earlier said the same. He said that he sort of he run uh, what's his name, Sandro Martinez. He just didn't know how to deal with him. And same with who was their right back at the time, Dallo. I think he Dallow, got forward yeah. a couple of times, but they just don't know what to do with him. And I think mm. that's the thing because he's so creative. Because he can pretty much play anywhere across midfield. So if he is deep, he can still receive the ball and he can take the ball. He's got pretty much world-class passing. So if he's got the ball deep, he can play a ball wide. He can play a ball centrally. He can do short passes, long passes. So he's a dream manager's midfielder in that he can pretty much do anything that a midfielder needs to do apart from have pace. And I think that yeah, Imagine if you really had pace, he would literally be one of the best players in the world. Yeah, because he, he's yeah. his attributes are so perfect all around the board. Um, his finishing's very good. His his creating chance is probably one of the best in the world. It is one of the best in the world st- mm. statistically, um, and not to mention his passing's so good. And I think that yeah, he's he's really just. It's almost like he ages better every year. It's weird. You think that Gross, you know, this year he's going to be the one where he slows down a bit. Maybe uh, you know, maybe start playing Shao Pedro in that position, but. It, it doesn't look like any any sign of getting tired at all. It, it just seems to be getting better for him, doesn't it? Mm. He's probably he's got to be the most underrated player in the Premier League for sure. I, mm. I, I think people just sleep on him still, and I can't really see. I can't really. I can't see him ever like moving because I don't feel like yeah. a, a, a club are, are going to sign Pascal Gross. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's a weird one. But he's he's arguably one of our best players. But even though we're yeah. full of unbelievable players. Um, but yeah, he's criminally underrated. But you know, if people keep what well, overlooking him, the opposition overlook him, then we're only going to benefit from it. Um, yeah, but he's true. been class, and I'm so happy. I think we spoke about it before, but I'm so happy that he got that call up to Germany. Shame about mm-hmm. how it ended with the manager getting sacked for the first time in 123 years of German <laughs> history, <laughs> which is nuts. But hopefully, whoever's in charge next time will call them up again. And he'll probably start because apparently he played quite well for Germany, considering they lost like four one to Japan. Um, yeah. So yeah, and I think well, they, then they did beat France, didn't they? But I don't know if he played. I didn't actually watch that. Um, you no, might I know that. No, I didn't look. But yeah, my point is criminally underrated, and you summed him up brilliantly about how good he is at everything apart from pace, which is his intelligence, isn't it? His, his IQ it. is out of this world for mm. particularly particularly us, but. Just for the league in general, as, they, as you say, I, I just I don't know what he has to do to be recognised for it because he's genuinely got one of the biggest footballing IQs in the league, and it's not even a joke. I mean, um, I, I, he starts that Manchester United team easily, and I think that it, the chance he creates is so valuable, and they have been for so many years. Um, it just beggars belief as to what he could have done if he was in a big, big team for all them years. Yeah. You know, he could have been recognised as one of the best out there, and I think that I that's remember the him, same thing to say. Remember him nearly. I think we talk, we mention it every time we talk about him or say how good he is. But do you remember when he was like almost fell off, like under under Hughton, he was yeah. going to leave, and that was him done. Played him imagine, deep, didn't he? Yeah, imagine if we lost Pascal Gross. I think he wanted to go back to Germany, um, and now look at him now. It's, it's mm. nuts, and yeah, he's finally earned. He's got that call up, which is he's, he's needed way more call ups for sure. Um, oh yeah. But hopefully this will be the first of many for him. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, Pascal Gross, absolute goat. icon, icon, goat. goat. Yeah, well and truly. And yeah, we are we are in the good times, Ben, because it doesn't get much better than when Tarek Lamptey crosses it to João Pedro, first time finish past oh. some 
Fraud in goal, by the way. Awful oh. goalkeeper, this guy. Uh, Onana <laughs> is terrible. Imagine going from De Gea oh, to Onana. Onana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Onana again. <laughs> mm. No, no, he scored again. No, it's awful. But Tarek Lamptey, by the way, getting forward again. Jao Pedro, fantastic finish, by the way. That is such a good goal. Yeah. It's, it's just, just such The a, way he opened gone. his foot and got the power oh. on it like that was nuts. That's so yeah. good. So good. Agree. And it came from a bit of a deserby ball move, didn't it? Like it started quite deep. I think we tried to get forward a couple of times and then we sort of gone back. Adingra comes forward, comes back again. And it just, it was just sort of biding our time every time, aren't we? We're, mm. we're just floating and waiting and waiting for the right moment. And then when that moment comes, we just flick into gear. Tarek's running. Jao Pedro's running. There's a dummy run off the ball. And then all of a sudden we've scored. And <laughs> it's weird to be saying this. Like, it's always, like, it's because... always a very similar goal as well. I think, past, yeah. um, who was it? Um, Mark Goldbridge was like, he's happened again. It's happened <laughs> yeah, yeah. again. They've done, yeah. done it again. Yeah, and it was. It looked like a carbon copy of the Dinger wrong, really, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's... I, I don't even have to explain our goal-scoring sort of abilities at the moment because, yes, okay, this time around it's, it's happened again. It's the same goal. But we don't score the same goal every time. That I think that's what's a joy. It used to be, you know, we'd maybe score from a corner. If we got a penalty, we'd score from one of them, hopefully, but we could have missed. Um, probably missed uh, back in the day. The, the, the most likely situation of us scoring a goal would have been a corner, probably, if, when we first got promoted, Lewis Dunk or Shane Duff would have got the red on it. And then you compare it in comparison to now, or Glenn Murray would have got a tap in. And you compare it to now, we can score from nearly any scenario. And... Uh, it, it's such a big sort of testament to De Zerbi what he's instilled because, you know, he couldn't have said this under Potter and I'm not disregarding Potter's time here, but we couldn't have said that under Potter, could we, that we yeah. can score from any situation, but we can score from crosses, we can score from build-up play, we can score from corners now. We seem to be able to score from anywhere, don't we? Was that There was that incredible stat on Match of the Day when the title of the stat was of the graphic was literally just Brighton are brilliant or, or Brighton are so brilliant mm. or something like that. And what yeah. have we got the most shots on target since in the Premier League since Deserby started yeah. took over? Um, I think we've got like the best, uh, second best XG, um, yeah. second best possession. Obviously, only behind Manchester City. Obviously, um, we were but first we're, in quite we're a lot leading, of stats, though, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, we're leading all the important stats really, or near, mm. near enough leading, um, which is nuts. And I know obviously we kind of bantered Graham Potter, but obviously he laid the foundations down for what Deserby's got now. So credit mm. to Potter for doing that. But yeah, De Zerbi's just taking us to another level. And the fact we can score so many goals and look so threatening every time we attack, it's a joy to watch. Unassailable levels as well. It's just incomparable when you look at it now. It's just madness. And as you say, them stats, first, second, second, first, 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 second. You know, it's all well and good saying all this. At what point do we have the conversation, Ben? Of De Zerbi, what... What, well, first, leaving, first leaving second, us? second, first, first in all these stats and all these really, yeah. really important stats. We're top, are you about top, to say top, we're top, title second, contenders? Top, top. I didn't say anything. I just said when we have a conversation <laughs> are you, about those are stats. Are you actually going to do that? Title contenders. Well, there's the title for the podcast. Title contenders. Yeah, for sure. I'm um, just saying Leicester won the league with less. Yeah. I mean, I saw it I saw it on Twitter a few times. Not from Brighton fans as well. I was like, oh, bro, people asking the question, people saying it, being title contenders, which is nuts. I think we can't get ahead of ourselves. Here. Can't we? Why though? Why? Because we're not. We, we're not. Maybe right now, if you looked at the league table, then you have to say yes. But it depends if we can do this, carry this on for the whole season. Then obviously we, we're title contenders because well, yeah, the format obviously. we're in is incredible. <laughs> That's not how football works. But then, if, if we're going to season, you win the If league. we're going to be absolutely yeah, true. <laughs> if we're going to be absolutely mental and consider this and talk about being title contenders, then yeah, maybe we are because of the way we're playing. And the yeah, and the the levels that we're at right now is incredible. So if we don't drop off, then we'll be fine. But what was the point I was trying to make is if you look at teams that we play, that's what I was going to say. If you look at the teams that we're going to be playing soon, a lot of them you think, oh yeah, we should win there, should win there. Maybe got we've got Villa and Liverpool coming up soon, haven't we? Yeah, beat Their Villa, beat Liverpool, you're like, draw with City, and then that's when that's when I can start thinking it. What Liverpool? Yeah, we got Liverpool home, Villa away, isn't it? And then City yeah, away. if we get six out of them, or if we get four points out of them two games, those are those then... are three very difficult games. So if we get yeah, if we get out of those three games and we've got some decent points on the board still from them, so maybe again we do we never do well against Villa, especially away. At no, Villa we Park. don't. No, we don't. We've never so, beaten them there, have we? 
that's going to be a big, big game to see how far we've come. If we win that, then totally. unbelievable scenes because they obviously yeah. they, they beat Palace three one yesterday, didn't they? But they scored like goals. Yeah, it's very quite a funny turnaround actually. Yeah, yeah, it was quite a funny turnaround. Like, it was peak because I don't think it should have been a penalty, but it's Palace, so it's funny. I haven't um, watched it yet, so I'll so yeah. What well, so, um, <laughs> who was it? Omar was it Omar Richards. He took down Ollie Watkins in the box, and then the referee was meant sent over to VAR to. Uh, obviously check it and then the referee stuck with his on field decision which is quite funny oh which really very rare, yeah very rare to happen yeah, um, so well. the penalty the penalty stood um, okay. but yeah if we get past Villa if we beat them unbelievable what a result if yeah. we beat Liverpool at home again would be an unbelievable result very possible by the way we've done it did the <clears> double over them last year no we drew with them at their place beat them free them at our place and yeah. beat them again in the cup in the cup uh, yeah. again it's it's not out of the question to say that we could beat Liverpool yeah. And it's not and a question to say... City is obviously an L. That's just a guaranteed L, surely. But is it, though? It is. is it, though? it is. It is, Because in that, in that second ridiculous. half of... Yeah, hear me out. Second half of the Etihad, when um, when Deserby first came in, I thought, and, and everyone thought, we played very, very well, probably could have got a point there. And it was only because of that world-class goal that De Bruyne scored that it really set the tone. And bear in mind, that was Deserby's like, third or fourth game in. And we're... Played really well. Then the second one at the Amex, obviously I know they've already won the league, but we drew with them and, and Van Hecker did a very, very good job of shutting up Erling Haaland as true. quite notoriously. Now I'm not saying I'm not saying we're gonna go beat City at the Etihad. Get and right I'm not there. saying we're gonna go win all these. We're games. already we're already debating being title contenders. We can't now go and say that we're gonna beat him, City. Hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. So I'm saying the way we play is very, very good. And I'm not actually saying we're gonna win the league, but I'm certainly saying for that top end of the table and seriously I don't I don't think that there's many teams better than us and I think that that's that's what's surreal to say if you went through that whole Premier League table purely on paper you'd be looking down on most of them teams and I think that that leaves you with the top four top five I think fifth gets Champions League this year right uh, um, City oh yeah because next Champions year League? is yeah next year is they're expanding it aren't they they're doing the whole new tournament Thing, yeah, which is going to be it's going to be a league, isn't it? The Champions League, which is well, all the year, all of Europe is going to be a league, which I hate, by the way. Mm. Um, but they're having so they're having, I think, maybe two more teams or four more teams in the Champions League next year. And yeah, we get a part if it if we do well in the coefficient. Well, I think that's how it works. This is just from Football Manager. <laughs> so that's the only reason yeah. why I know it. Um, then yeah, you get fifth. The best league gets fifth, another place, which will probably be the Premier League anyway, because we are the best league in the world. So yeah, we probably will get the fifth spot which will be gives us more chance to get in the Champions League which would be that that's an objective I'm sure De Zerbi's aiming for surely because I remember yeah. last year didn't you say or didn't De Zerbi say that was the objective to, well they were thinking about to it get Champions trying League, to, yeah, yeah. to get Champions mm. League last that was last season so imagine they've got to be really thinking it so now, what are they surely. aiming for this season Ben Champions League. Champions <laughs> League, I think they're aiming for that for sure. Hey, listen, I could I could do this all day. This is a very enjoyable thing to debate. It's about, funny. But, uh, it's on unbelievable, a, on a, mate. We talked yeah, we kept talking a, about it yesterday um on the train. Just like yeah. I, I know we always say it, we're classic little old Brighton, how far we've come, but we have come so far. It is ridiculous. Yeah. And now we've got we're playing in Europe. Wait, we've just beaten Man United three one at Old Trafford, and now we're playing in the Europa League. We're playing in Europe on Thursday. It just, yeah. it's insane, insane. The journey has been incredible. And yeah. everyone that's watched them when we were crap in League Two, when we were shit in League One, it's when mad. Tony Bloom took us over, gave us hope. We thought, oh my God, we, there's a chance. We'll get, we'll get promoted to the Championship. That's going to be amazing. Then we got to the Championship and we thought, oh my God, we're the league below the Premier League. What the hell? But we'll never, we'll never get there. Maybe it'll take us 10 years in the Championship to get up to the Premier League. It did, and we've done it pretty quickly. And, and now we're, absolutely killing it in the Premier League it's it is yeah. unbelievable yeah and I just think it's a matter of time before people really really take it seriously and I, and I really hope that it does happen soon enough because you know you say you go on these podcasts you go on these places let's say I went on there saying Pascal Gross your nemesis and I said that we're going to win and there's and, and a, I think there was a player swap question over who who I'd have in their team Man United players that I'd have in our team and I and I had to really, really, really <laughs> think about it. Really That's think so about funny. it. I said, I said I think I'd take Sancho to revive him. That had him laughing, right? But the thing is, you know, you know, he would, you know, you know, deserve he would. Yeah, Brighton fans yeah. understand that that is the case, and that could happen. That would work. Not, not signing Sancho, but me like, yeah, it actually working out. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. And then I said, mm, maybe we could do the right back. So I'd have Wamba Saka. And then I said, but I don't really know anyone else. I said, we're pretty good. And then he said, not even Lissandro Martinez. And I said, <laughs> the what, over Lewis Dunk or Van Hecker? I said, no. I said, why would I do that? I said, Van yeah. Hecker's better than him at the moment. I said, at, the minute, at this minute in time, I wouldn't stop anyone in that team. And he said, what about Casemiro? And I said, we've got Billy Gilmore, man. I'm happy. And obviously, again, that comes across like I'm delusional. Yeah. But this team works. That must have so rattled broke, so many Man United fans. Oh, oh, that. Mate, hearing, I hope it has. Hearing a, hearing a Brighton fan go, you know, I don't really know who I'll take from Man United. It's, yeah. it's nuts. And do you know what? I hope it did. And the, the yeah. thing is, this is more, more to the point is, as you say, I won with how far we've come, but it all just works here. So why change it? I mean, the, the egos, as we mentioned, that you talk about Danny Welbeck being a nice guy. I'm sure you've got quite a few of these nice guys in that team now mm. because they all play for each other. It's a team, isn't it? I think as soon as you get a Casemiro in or as soon as you get a, you know, them sort of big, big players, five Champions League winners, think that they run the place, that's when things can go wrong. I yeah, mean, exactly. a lot of pl- that's teams try and do that. Exactly. That's the difference between us and these, yeah, like Man United and other clubs that maybe suffer. It's because we've got all of the players in our dressing room are good people, and that yeah. you can be really good on the football pitch, but you also have to be a nice person off it and work as a team and have that chemistry. And like when you see the full time season, how win. much everyone fucking loves each other, and even yeah. seeing it in Tottenham now, like he's got like exactly. Ange's got the players like loving each other, and that it it mat- matters so much. You can't just get. Mm. You can't just buy Rafa of Iran because he's won a Champions League and World Cup and think, oh, he's going to fix all the problems. You can't just no. give Sancho 350k a week from Dortmund because he's done there and think it's going to be mm. fine. You've got, to, you've got to make sure they're actually good people as well. But mm. And it seems that Man United have very little of them, which is why you're probably right. Well, you are right. It's difficult to think who would you want in that Man United team because yeah. none of them seem like... Maybe they, obviously Rashford, Rashford is because of the stuff he does off the pitch. He seems like actually it's a decent person. Sheet though, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's actually seems like a fairly decent person but there's yeah. not many people in that there's not many players in that well actually yeah there's not many people in that Man United team that seem like these genuine blokes and nice people that, that you would want assume, that would, yeah that we would want because like, I wouldn't want Fernandez. I don't care how many goals and assists he gets like I just wouldn't want him in our team he would drive me insane he drives me insane watching him so I couldn't even begin to imagine him in my team I don't care how many goals he gets I'd rather have gross and, and I would and I'd rather have Jao Pedro, I'd rather have our players that we've got than Bruno Fernandes because it just it would upset the balance of our team. Yeah. And I think that's what's so good about our recruitment and that everyone bangs on about our recruitment. We haven't even seen Carlos Belaber yet worth mentioning. <laughs> yeah, and, but we look at the sort of... We identify the, the, the players' abilities, attributes, rather than the players' sort of position. We'll just look at what, what do we need to work in this system rather than... You know, we need a midfielder to play midfield. We need a right back to play right back. We need, you know what I mean? That's what they'll just do. They'll just go, okay, we need a right back to play right back. Okay, let's go find the best right back in Germany and buy him. That's how you do it on FIFA. You yeah. can't do that in real life. Like, it just doesn't work like that. Whereas we'll be, we'll say, okay, well, we need a right back who can also cover him right, right side of centre back, who could maybe play in midfield and can get up and down the wing. Okay, let's find someone that can sort of play winger, who can drop back deep. You know what I mean? It's different. So I think... Yeah. You can't solve that just by spending four hundred million. You know that's that's what the biggest point of this is, and that's why Brighton beat Manchester United every time because it, it, we're just better than you, pretty much. Um, but yeah, anyway, enough said about Manchester United. I think uh, yeah, Adsu Fati should have scored. Very very big shame. Sort yeah, of, but that was that. Yeah, that would have been like we said. That would have been the cherry on top of the icing on top of the cake. That would have mm. been so good if we had scored. Oh, my God, scenes. Chao but... Pedro loves it, doesn't he? Coming over to yeah. the away end at the end, doing yeah. all this. Van Hecker going at this. Just, and what a lovely great, touch, him doing Julio celebration as well. That yeah, one, this one. one. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Oh. Right, same yeah. time. Yeah, it? that was a lovely Good touch. Um, and Jao Pedro loves it. He loves the club already. And again, mm. just it sums it up perfectly. He seems like a nice person and loves the club. And we, we've got a team working together brilliantly, whereas Man United look like a team of individuals that are all stroppy. And yeah. the fans, the mate is so funny when Hoyland got t- taken off and they were booing. <laughs> yeah. My God, they're getting rattled. And obviously, yeah. actually, that's what I wanted to say. Obviously, we seen you seen the album in a fuck off home. Obviously, that it worked really, really well yesterday because Man United sing that they sing you see United in a fuck off home. So doing it to them was just summed it up perfectly. And seeing the Man United fans leave when that third one went in was so so funny, so <laughs> yeah. funny. It, it, yeah. No, that's that's what I want to say. Now. Because yeah. that 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 chart for us, some Brighton fans don't really like it, do they? 
They think that we're being. Yeah, I like cocky. it. It's funny. Isn't I it? like it's it. Yeah, funny. it's funny. Yeah, we're not actually being serious, but when we yeah. batter batter teams, it just works and it's funny. Yeah, it's just because it's it, you. You got to enjoy yourself. I think that's the thing. These people on Twitter and stuff, they'll sit behind their keyboards and start complaining about something they heard in the crowd about it being a little bit too arrogant, or you know what I mean. Or they'll see a tweet and they think that we're overhyping somebody just because we said they'd play well. Like they just. They just want something to moan about. Like, if you ever met them in real life, they're probably just one of them weirdos who just would never speak to you in real life. And they just they just want to complain about something because they have to complain about something. Otherwise, everything just stops in the world. So, yeah, mate, forget them. Who cares? Like, if you people who go these games, just enjoy it. Like, if you enjoy it however you want to enjoy it, obviously, with being respectful, don't be an idiot and go and beat everyone up. Well, yeah, I'm not involved in all that. But, like, just enjoy yourself. You know what I mean? It's not It's not hard, but... Yeah, Manchester United fans well and truly deserve this humble oh. for the years. Go on, yeah, I forgot. I um, the homophobia yesterday, three di- three different times. Was it? Uh, yeah, three. Well, yeah, I didn't outside, hear outside outside of the ground. Sorry, not inside. Uh, outside the ground. I saw one um, guy at the top do something to Brighton fans. Oh, at really? The I mean, yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, three three separate occasions. I called. Well, one of the guys, Corey. Said, oh, that guy. Um, when we walked out of the spoons, apparently the guys were going gay, gay, gay. And then Corey, yeah, the skit called Corey told me. I didn't actually hear it, but I called him out for it. Um, mm. And then, yeah, other occasions when they were saying it. And then also, yeah, it was they're calling us shirt lifters when we were walking back to the station, which is apparently like a really, really old um, term yeah. that, that they used to use. Uh, and then when we were getting off the tram, this Man United fan that was stood next to the door, bearing in mind, like, Jack's mum was there. He was trying to trip us up, and he tried tripping up Jack's mum. And we were like, what are you doing? He just kept sticking his foot out, so I kicked his foot. And he's just, yeah, he was, he was so rattled. And we all just went up to him, like, giving it to him. And he just looked, yeah, he looked like absolutely shat himself. He said, just, why are you trying to trip up a woman? Yeah. Just, yeah, That's absolutely weird. rattled. And, yeah, shit fans, mate. And they deserve, they deserve all the pain and misery that they're going through right now. I agree. I actually agree with you. And I, I, they really deserve it. Them and, them and Chelsea fans, they deserve it. They, all them years, like, just unbearable years of them winning titles and winning everything and they're all just taking photos of it and loving it and I just hate it. Every single second of it I'd hate it. And I just think, oh, you're just so unbearable. And instead I, of right, instead of taking uh, pictures of trophies, they're taking pictures and filming Jao Pedro celebrating now, which <laughs> Yeah. Where he's like, shows how the tables like, have on celebration, didn't yeah. it? It's fantastic that was. I can't believe um, Man United fan got his phone out to start filming Brighton celebrations. That's yeah, so funny. Yeah, um, no, I agree. Although I would yeah. have liked him to come over to our fan, Jao Pedro, that would have been better, but yeah. yeah, he rattled quite a few, so it's alright. Yeah. Um Okay, I think that's pretty much it for yeah, the for the we're, game. We're good um, at I we're said off, I think off air. I said we'll probably do twenty five minutes. So we're no, it's never minutes. though, is it? Because like, let's be honest. This is one of the best, the best times for a podcast you could ever call for. After mm. you've beaten United three one, I, I love saying that, and I think it's great. I could say that so many times. I think I'm going to say it all day today. Beating my United three one at Old Trafford. Get tattooed. <laughs> so why not just milk a pod? Like, there's going to be people enjoying this, watching this, thinking this is, this is just make it prolonging it making it even better true, celebrating it true. for another hour and I hope we have if Milk you're listening it. or watching I hope yeah. we've I hope we've done that and you're still buzzing after the unbelievable result because yeah mm. I feel at, my social battery is drained already it's only half 12 on a Sunday and I'm done for the day that's me now after this yeah, I'm not I talking to so anyone much. yeah <laughs> same I need to eat I haven't eaten yet right shall yeah, we wrap up then yeah, um, okay, I think that's pretty much everything done then. Um, yeah, Brighton are very, very good at football. We're, we're only just getting started as well. That's what's mad. Think about our bench, for God's sake, how much we had on our bench as well. I mean, it's 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 an insane time to be a Brighton fan. We're bringing on Ansu Fati, Jao Pedro, Jamie <laughs> Milner, Evan Ferguson, just off the bench when we're already winning 3-0 or 2-0. So this is the good times, ladies and gents. Enjoy it, make yeah. sure you are, because it's... You don't know when it's going to end, but more importantly, you don't know how long it's going to go on for. So yeah. let's, let's, Hopefully let's all try and season, enjoy every minute of it. And then we win yeah. the title. That'll be it. Yeah. Title contenders, you heard title it first. But yeah. Anyways, <laughs> get your bets on. And um, yeah, we'll see you probably just before Athens in the Europa League. The next Jesus. time we see Brighton play will be in the Europa League at the Amex. Until then, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and um, we'll see you very soon. Goodbye. Cool.